Hello, welcome back to PowerShell for Pen Testers. In this video, we're going to talk about how we can enumerate computer objects within the Marisec domain using PowerShell and PowerView. So here again, we have our PowerShell download cradle with PowerView set up already. So let's go ahead and open PowerShell. And we'll make this a little easier to see. And I'm just going to go ahead and paste. PowerView has a built-in function called getNetComputer, which will enumerate all of the computer objects within the domain environment using PowerView. And here you can see that we have two. If you're in a larger domain, you know, such as a client domain or uh, you know, one of the domain environments and say hack the box or try hack me, uh, you could have many, many more computers in this. Even in your own local home network, uh, if you have your own home lab, you might have several more machines. If you've done the movement pivoting and persistence course, uh, you'll also have workstation 02 here. In this case, this enumerated two computers because this is what's listed in the domain controller. We can also get more data about our computers if we do full data, right? So let's go ahead and run full data. And if we scroll up, we can see that password last set. Yes, computer accounts also have passwords. And this was set when the computer was generated on September 4th, which was yesterday for me. And you can see that the distinguished name is DC01, uh, et cetera. The display name is DC01 with a dollar sign. This is indicative of a machine account, uh, very common. Uh, you get the LDAP information, et cetera. We also get Workstation 01's data and information, just as we did uh, the domain controller. GetNetComputer also allows us to enumerate specifics within the domain environment about types of computers that might be available based on operating systems. So if we type in operating system, in, in quotations, quotations we do quotation and then asterisk Windows 10, and then asterisk and another double quote and hit enter, it'll show you all the Windows operating or Windows 10 operating systems within the domain. And again, the only one we have is the one we're working on, Workstation 01. If you added additional Windows 10 machines, these would be listed if they're domain joined. We can also do this to find Windows Server environments. So if we type in Windows Server, this will list DC01 because this is our server environment. This is really good for if you're looking for servers to try to exploit or you know kind of triage your target structure and your target uh, footprint within a domain environment to run these commands. Finally we have something called invoke share finder and I wasn't going to list this under computer but I think it works well enough because it does pertain to computers. So if we run invoke share finder this will look for shares within our Active Directory environment or within our domain. And here you can see that there is a share on DC01. Uh, Sysvol is expected. This is going to be for the domain. We also see that there's one called shared. And if we wanted, we could do something like ls DC01 shared. And this will list out the contents of that directory. This will only work if we have authentication or we're authorized to access that directory. So if we try to do, say, the C drive, we're probably not going to be able to access that because we don't have permissions. We are unauthorized. Finally, we can clean some of this up as well and get some verbosity, on the other hand, by running invoke share finder. And then if we exclude standard, we exclude print, and we exclude IPC, we can just list out uh, those additional shares that we might be able to access and then finally, if we want to run verbosity as well, we can get a little bit more output um, pertaining to LDAP, etc. So hopefully this has helped you understand a bit more about finding computer objects within your domain environment as well as the invoke share finder function. And I'll see you over in the next lesson. Until then, thank you so much for joining.